Yo, what up? Welcome to another episode of Source and Company. I'm your host, Source, of course. As always, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I still say Twitter for some reason, even though I'm never on Twitter. Instagram and Twitter, at Smitty Source on both of those. Uh, you can subscribe to the Source and Company YouTube channel, Spotify as well. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, if you prefer, but we try to keep it to YouTube and Spotify and get those numbers up. And you can follow the Instagram for the show, which is source nco podcast underscore rba. Woo, all right. <laughs> Here you go. So today's company is, I'm going to just say it off, off the rip, my former co-worker. We used to work together. I don't know how many years, but it was a number. Ten. I know. How many? Ten. Really? Jeez. I was there for 12. I was two before I came to that department, and I stayed there for 10. So, yeah. Dang. So, we worked together for 10 years, apparently. Uh, <laughs> we had our, our little crew, a crew of six in our section that we always rock with on a daily basis. She is now a personal trainer. She does group classes as well as individual training. She's a hustler, baby, which is- You know it. She's always been like that from selling the merch regarding fitness to selling other products, including CMOS hair products as well. And she, she's she been a model pretty much the whole time that I've known her. And uh, yeah, we're gonna get into a little bit or a lot of all that. Today's <laughs> Melissa Maples. And this is the first time I've called her Melissa in probably eight years. Yeah, yeah, maybe nine, because you probably you caught on to Mello really quick. Yeah, I thought I thought I was I thought I originated that in that moment. So you know, I'm taking credit for it, regardless of who else called you Mello. I'm I'm the originator. <laughs> yeah, you were the originator. Then they started trying to copy you. You know how that goes. Exactly, it's a lifestyle. <laughs> how are you doing, man? How are you doing? I'm doing fabulous. You know, this lifestyle has been great to me. Can't complain at all, and business has been fantastic. Really? You know, I was scared when I when I left the job, but it just skyrocketed and it just is not slowing down. Like come next month, I'm fully freaking booked. Unless they Word. jump into class on Zoom, I might have to, you know, start a waiting list. I started with one person. That's crazy. Do you know Myla was my very first? Myla? Uh -oh. And she is still with me. Really? Yes. And you know, she's in a different state, her and her husband. Wow, that's crazy because Mala actually <laughs> worked with us for a, a little time as well. That's wild. So we're already going to talk about it. Let's just get into that part right now. One day, I get a message saying, hey, I'm leaving in a week. <laughs> I'm about to uh, quit. I'm like, uh, what are you talking about? It's like, yeah, I'm going to do my, my thing full time. Take me through that because you know it takes some, it takes some nerve and some planning and some faith to jump out there like that. And not everybody is willing to do it, even if they have something that they really could do it with. So, how did you come up with this idea and put it into action? Okay, well, you know me on a personal level, and we're not going to go too too deep into it. You know, it is a bit of a sob story, but <laughs> right, you know, right. I, I had a a rough patch with an ex and I just got really depressed and I was really just eating at the desk all the time. You remember potlucks? Man. I would have like five plates. <laughs> like I was excessive. I was just eating, like eating was comfort for me. Right. Then you remember I started to be like, okay, let, let me stop doing this. Let me get better at it. You know, we all started breaking off, working from home. Remember I was at home for what, like five years, you know, mm. we like towards the end of the career at my job. But the more I got into it and the more I shared on social media, the more people wanted in. You know, I really wanted to inspire people. That was really my main goal. It's like, if I can do it, you can do it. Then people wanted to pay me for it. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, we might got something here. Let me get certified. Like, let me, let me talk to you from an educated point of view, you know? So once I did that and I was ready, it then went to a standstill. Like nobody wanted to do it. I had to do like free training at first. You know, like, well, let me try with some people. Let me build up the courage. And then just more and more people joined, you know, and then a, a friend trainer of mine actually had a building 
that's really what helped me a lot. I'm not going to lie. Like, I really appreciate him getting the building. And then he wanted me to join him. We started doing the classes, which of course grew. Then it came to the point where I was making more money there at my job. And I wasn't even doing it, but before and after work. You know, the hustle was real. I'm training people at 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m. until I had to be at work 8, 8.30. Like I literally would train, like just barely be able to get here, <laughs> sign on, and then work. And that's when I realized like, okay, this, this is real. Like people like me and I like people and I can really make a difference. Yeah, I can get bills paid. That's great. But I only had but so much control. It's not my company. Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, let me get into fitness. Let, let me help people not ever get to that point. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, but even that, let's go back even further because you, I mean, you started, like you said, you started doing it on the side. But before that, I remember before you really started working out, period, right? And you just talked about it, I guess, a little bit as to why you may have gone that route. But like fitness, would, I would never, like, you know, I'm not really trying to go to the gym. I've you know, been an athlete all my life for, for the most part. And I ain't trying to go to nobody's gym at all, at all. So I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. So what was it that was it the, the rough patch that made you get into going to the gym, period? Yeah, so. I mean, I, I'm an open book. I, I've talked a little bit about it on Instagram, but just to be blank, you know, about what's going on, I had I had a boyfriend who just was, at the time, a piece of crap, but I, I didn't know, you know, love is blind. And I got pregnant in my tubes. I could not keep the child. Like it just, you can't, like if you get pregnant in your tubes, you have to abort or try to carry it. And then you end up having to have surgery anyway. Like it's just, so that just really depressed me because he really didn't support me. He started sleeping around. It just got really, really messy. So for me, working out was an outlet. It was like me taking my life back. Like I could control this. I couldn't control that, but I could control here. And it became a little addictive. You know what I mean? Like replacing one thing with another. That I could control how my body looked, how I reacted, how heavy I went, if I wanted to go or if I didn't. And the more I did it, it just, it just skyrocketed. Like people say, oh, you know, you need motivation. No, you need some dedication. Mm -hmm. Like I dedicated myself to be a better person. Then my next goal was dedicate myself to help other people. That's what actually makes me get up because I look at the clock too. And I'm like, I don't know this bed. <laughs> it's been real cozy right now. But that dedication is next level. Motivation is not going to get you there. Because mm. you'll be motivated one day. Oh, yeah, let's go run a mile. Next day, you're not. And then what do you do? Exactly. And you know, being an athlete, you had to be dedicated to the money or a goal or something has to get you out of bed or you're not going to do it. Right. Just is. saying I'm going to lose five pounds ain't enough because then you'll be like, well, I'll lose the next month. I'll lose the next month. That's not enough. You have to have a real reason. That's why a lot of people come to me after having a medical condition because then it gets real. Mm, yeah. I, I always said, and you know, that kind of points to what you just said. I always said, I'm not going to the gym unless the doctor tells me. I literally say that. I'm not going to the gym unless the doctor tells me. So I can I can see how people, especially when it's something more serious, uh, will turn to a trainer to help them turn things around. And you have so many clients who love you. Like, even if people don't know you, if they know any of your clients, they know that's your client because they big you up like on a regular basis. They love you. Why do they love you so much? I mean, you know, because you're a great person, but why do they <laughs> your opinion? Well, I mean, the feedback that I get from them and you probably know, you probably saw the video. They did an appreciation video for me last night. I mean, last year, like when COVID hit mm -hmm. and I, it was so thoughtful because, you know, I lost the building I was at a little bit of background. We had this, but we had a bigger building that had a kitchen um a full bathroom um a whole back room like it was really nice but when COVID happened we all had to close our gyms I couldn't afford to pay for a location that I was not using like come May will be my second year anniversary doing this full time but that was year one mm -hmm. and anybody who runs a business knows that first year is really your make it or break it year so I was really like damn I didn't jumped out here 
and it was doing good. Now all of a sudden I got to close. Like I was not prepared for that. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that video right there was wonderful. But the, the thing is I've created a community where women, first of all, I tell them up front, like we have group chats. I created that so that when I'm not there, they can talk to each other. So they have each other as a big support group. And they said that's different from a lot of trainers because most trainers aren't as personable. They don't check on them daily. I tell them good morning, just like I would my husband or, you know, my best friend. Like they're my friends. Right. I don't just see them as clients. Like they're real people. They have real problems. They came to me for a reason. So I think that extra personal touch helps a lot, which is why I don't, I don't ever want to get so huge that I can't do that. Right. You know? That's why I have to limit myself. So when I say sold out, yeah, I could take more people, but then it starts to dip into the quality of service I give them. That's true. That's true. And look, my job taught me something and it did give me cu good customer service skills. I will say that. <laughs> <Indeed>. <laughs> I carry that on with me, you know. So thank you. Thank you, Job. We appreciate that part. You know, thank you for some. <laughs> <laughs> so you talk about... Uh, even the idea of taking on more clients. How did you even, how do you, how do you figure it out? How'd you figure out what you could do and what you couldn't do as far as dealing with COVID? Because once, you know, COVID hit, which affected you, like you said, you still had to do something. And then I saw you coming back. You was like, we're we doing in-person workouts, but we got these people, they spread out, blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh snap, like, is it safe? But then it just kept growing and you kept doing the same thing and it kept getting better and better and still with the same, you know, spacing and safety for everybody. So how has that been for you? Well, good thing is as business owners, they give you criteria, you know, so they tell you what they want you to do and what they feel that, you know, scientists feel are good at, uh, you know, a certain amount of space, certain requirements, making sure you're ventilating the space, making sure that you're cleaning it with heavy duty products. Mm -hmm. I mean, everything. I already was a neat freak anyways, but like it, it increased. Like I'm talking about, I'm making sure I'm getting every single hand, uh, doorknob, every handle. I look at the girls when they touch the TRX for stretches. Like I really pay attention and make sure I thoroughly clean. That's why I wanted to have my own space because let's be honest, the public gym, they're not cleaning all those door handles and stuff. They're not cleaning, you know, fans. They don't think of stuff like that. You got to turn that fan on and off, but nobody comes over there and wipes that fan after. So I wanted to separate myself from everywhere else where again, I could control the narrative. I could control what was happening. So even though I had to find a smaller space, I bounced right back and Zoom was a blessing mm -hmm. because I always wanted to do virtual, but most trainers, if they even do it, they're not very forthcoming. I'm gonna be honest, it's, it's kind of cutthroat. Like people don't like to share. Even though there's way more clients than it is trainers, people like to keep information. So like, I really had to dig for it. Yeah. When Zoom hit the platform, that's what's really helped. It made me a better trainer. I had to get really creative because what we're doing in person, even though I, I have like three people, I have to make sure that what we're doing here, you can do there. Right. We can't jump on the squat rack because you don't have a squat rack. <laughs> I had to get creative. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The, but the neat freak thing, which points back to why you were one of the few people whose food I would trust, because <laughs> you know, you know, we look at people's food like, who made that joint? I, yeah, I'm not touching that. I'm not. Potluck days, yeah. Certain people like, yeah, no, we're gonna take a hard pass on that right there. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> that brings back a whole bunch of memories. I just, I can picture plates and, you know casserole dishes and oh yeah I make we won't pass on that John oh yeah yeah um so back to the training how how hard because like you said it's a lot of trainers and everybody everybody has their own thing everybody has their own community but do you, I've seen you in videos doing uh, different things with different trainers who I guess you have relationships with as far as uh like, like networking. I mean, I remember the one joint where it's you, the, the young lady, and the, the, the diesel dude. He didn't have a shirt on and y'all are there, y'all were- Josh and Palaja, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so how, how does one become 
part of that. I, I guess that is a community too. It, it can be a community of trainers, can it? It can be, but that's the thing. So many people, when I first started, I reached out to a couple people. If they gave me the cold shoulder or if I felt a negative vibe, I would just go away. Mm -hmm. Like I said, luckily one guy actually reached out to me, but it, it was really more as monetary reason. I looked at him as a friend and he did mentor me, but he really approached me from a money point of view. Yes. Like he felt, and he's an older black guy. I'm a younger white woman. He saw me as being marketable. Uh, that we could take the business to the next level using more of me, my face, my body type. Just being, you know, black and white. That's that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. Um, I like I said, I thought it was a friendship. I mean, we unfortunately are no longer friends, but and I learned the truth behind it. I'm still grateful for the experience because if it wasn't for his push, I may not have really gotten out here and gotten a building. Like that was never my goal. I had just planned to work for a gym. But then when you think about it, why would I leave one job to work another job? That's kind of counterproductive. That's true. That's true. So yeah. <laughs> so you decided to put put matters, take matters into your own hands and, and do it your way. How yeah, and you know, every day is a learning. It's, even for me now, like I love the classes and I love the fact that I have an open door policy with my girls. Like, give me feedback, mm -hmm. help me be a better trainer. What can I do to help you? And I tell them like, this is the all positive zone, nothing negative. I don't allow them to negatively shame them, themselves in my presence. Right. I'm their cheerleader. We're not going to do that. Just tell me what you did and we can fix it. You know, if you slipped up, it's okay. What, what did you do? Let's, let's try this. Let's try that. And I think me being an open person has not only helped me with clients, but it's helped me with trainers because people will comment on my page. Some other trainers may be cocky and just be like, yeah, whatever. Me, I talk to them. I'll slide in your DM, say, how you doing? You know, maybe we could do a video sometime. And that video that you're talking about last year for COVID with all the female trainers, mm -hmm. I did that. I reached out to everybody and was like, hey, I would like to do this video. Would you like to join? I did all the editing, I put the music on, I put it together. Cause some of the girls were like, they didn't even know how to do videos then. Like me and Maria are real cool. Everybody knows Body by Maria. She was like I one of the know. biggest first female trainers in Richmond. Mm -hmm. How could you not know her? You know what I mean? So she was like one of the first people I hit up. She had just went vegan, me and her, I got cool. I did one of her competitions. That's my thing. Put your ego to the side and network, meet people. So that's what I did. I started reaching out to people and now people will message me and be like, hey, is that trainer cool? Is that trainer cool? I'm like, yeah, talk to them. That's dope. You're the, you're the community person. You're the community <laughs> person. <laughs> well, because you know, I'm, I'm just out there. Like, I'm just, I'm a black or white person. Like, you say something, I'm going to say something back. We either going to get along or we not. But it's never going to be a grudge. It's never going to be an issue. Like, it's all good. I'm happy over here. So I just move on and worry about myself. See, now I got two questions because I was about to, since you mentioned Body by Maria and her going vegan, mm -hmm. we talk about that in a second about you going vegan, but you just were saying, you know, the type of person that you are. And I was going to say that anyway, because I'm like, generally I'm the same person wherever I, like whoever I'm around, it don't matter. I'm, I'm still going to be. You're same. you all day, every day. I love right. that about you. I appreciate it. But that's the same thing about you. You're yourself, regardless of the situation. But I mean, and I don't know, you know, if at some point in life something clicked, but I'm thinking something had to click. You couldn't have been that way since birth. So how old were you, if you remember, when you became comfortable just being yourself? To be honest, it was later in life. I had a lot of self-conscious issues growing up, but you're right. It, it happened right around somewhere between 18 to 21 when I became an adult adult. Mm -hmm. And I was able to pay for my own stuff, do my own stuff. Once I did that, you couldn't tell me shit. Like, if I did, if I was, you know, trying to hide who I was, it's because I couldn't do for myself. But once I was 100% able to do for myself, mm -hmm. well, no looking back. This is what it is. Take it or leave it. This is me. You know? So people are looking at me like, Melissa, you've always been confident. No, I really wasn't. I really wasn't. I'm just... I don't know if it's because I'm a Capricorn, but like I had that, you know, cold <laughs> surface, but a lot be going on in here. I just don't always show it. I got that poker face. Right. You know what I mean? But now I'm just confident. Like I love me. 
even if you don't, I'm still gonna be good over here. That's the key. Plus your thug, so you add that in there. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So you mentioned, uh, you were talking about Body Mar by Maria, uh, like I said, and her going vegan. Listen, so you were talking about when you used to eat whatever at the potluck or, or whatever the case was. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I remember when you used to cook and bring in some extra and, you know, you'd be like, hey, y'all, you want some? Yes, with the, with the spaghetti and the sriracha, of course, sriracha always on hand. I love sriracha. Yeah. Oh, do you still love Roger? Yes. Of course you do. Of course you do. So how did you even get into the idea of veganism? Not even vegetarian. You like vegan, that's a whole nother level. And some people don't understand the difference between vegetarian and vegan. And not that I do, you know, for real, for real, but I know they're nowhere near the same thing because you can't even eat products from an animal as a vegan, right? Correct. It means no animal products at all where mm -hmm. vegetarian it's no meat right it's still animal products like honey eggs dairy they come from an animal but it's not the actual animal so mm -hmm. that's the difference between the two and then vegan vegan itself people get confused too with plant-based and vegan plant-based is only talking about the food i'm an actual vegan so it goes past the food for me that means at this point in my life, I probably wouldn't even ride a horse. I know that sounds crazy and dramatic, but like, I don't even wear Timberlands anymore. Like things I grew up, like if it comes from an animal or I feel like in any way or form will hurt an animal, I just don't do it at all. So it's, it's way more than the food for me at this point. And you know, my anniversary is coming up in the spring and I'll be vegan six years. Look, vegan when it wasn't even cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's cool now. Athletes are vegan. Your, you know, your neighbor might be vegan. You hear it on, like, every TV show, mm -hmm. every movie. There's, like, a line, a joke a, on stand-up. Like, you hear it everywhere. Back then, it's like, what's that? What, <laughs> what does vegan mean? Like, what do you mean? So you don't eat this? You don't eat that? Yeah. So now people kind of, they get it. Yeah, nobody knew at first, like, some people didn't know that there was a difference between vegetarian and vegan. Like, yeah, they, they vegetarian, you know, and just automatically think it's the extreme of veganism, but it's not even close. Yeah, like to be honest, when I first went vegan, before I was vegan, I was the same way. I thought vegan was the protesters, but it still was a vegetarian. I thought it was just like, you know, PETA or like an activist. I thought it was like an extreme vegetarian. I did not know myself. So I feel you, look, before I was vegan, this is a little joke, go ahead and laugh, I don't care. I'm from the city, you know that, I'm from Baltimore, right? We don't have farms there. I dead ass thought cows just made milk all the time. I thought that was like their superpower. I did not know they had to be pregnant like a human to make milk until I went vegan. You're telling me something because I've never even thought that deeply about cows and, and milk. I did not know that was a thing. So see, see, I like I was that same person. Like I had no idea. And my mom's looking at me like, yeah, you know, my mom, you know, she's she's first generation American. I'm second generation. So her family had farms, you know, they're from another country. So she's like, yeah, if there's no baby, there's no milk. I'm like, what do you mean? Like, what? yeah. The things you don't know when you're detached from making your own food. So that's really what it is. People have no idea. True. Some people, if they knew more, they would actually not want to do it. But that's part of the reason of not wanting to know. That's a, that's, yeah. that's a lot of things in life, though, for real. Like, people be like, I ain't know. Including racism, which we're not really getting into. But it just crossed my mind. Sometimes people just have no idea. And they don't. They know once you know. You can't not know. So you can't say you didn't know after you know. So that just puts more pressure on you to respond to what you know. And nobody wants to do yeah, that. Yeah, it starts to pull on your heartstrings and your conscience because now you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of people were, I'm going to tell you, a lot of people in front of me when I first went vegan because I, I went hard. Like, I was mad that I didn't know this stuff. Like, I was really mad. I wasn't trying to shame people. I was trying to be like, 
how are y'all not mad like me? Y'all don't know, so let me tell y'all. Killing us. You was killing us, meat eaters, Mello. You was out there like, <laughs> you was heavy, heavy on a no. You better not eat that. Don't, <laughs> don't eat these animals. Look at what you're doing. Look. <laughs> and I'm sorry, my approach now is a lot better. You know what I mean? Like some, a lot of the girls do convert on their own. You know, because I do give oh. them recipes and everything, and a lot really? of girls have been converting. Really? But I do not push that on anybody. Like just just in case anybody was wondering after they see this and they're like, "Oh, let me check her out." Don't worry, I will never force you to do anything you don't want to do. <laughs> Look, we're all adults here. Make your own decisions. Make your own decisions. Yep, I just give the information, and now I'm still kind of like PG thirteen. I realize some people just can't handle it, and if they have enough on their plate. The last thing I want them to do is feel like they can't eat anything. Right. Yeah. Plus, plus it's not, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing it's not cheap. Like, I know vegetarian, being a vegetarian didn't seem like it was cheap. You were always looking for the the best. Well, I mean, I guess it, they, they know you want it. <laughs> they know you want it to be healthy. So you're going to have to pay this extra to get whatever it is. Well, that's actually a big misconception. Is it? Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, it's a big misconception. People think that a lot because they're looking for the easy way out. They're looking at the processed foods. Mm. Yes, convenience, like everything else. If you want them to make it for you and you want them to make it vegan, they tax you being an asshole. But when you make your own food, which everybody really should do anyways, it's super cheap. Whole foods is not just a store. <laughs> it's a term where you cook the food yourself from scratch. A block of tofu and a pack of beef or a pack of beans and a pack of beef, the price is way different and meat is always way higher. Mm -hmm. It's just people don't want to cook their own food. They want to go buy that Beyond Meat and that Impossible Burger. They really want it to be the same thing. And I'm like, eh, if you do that, your bill's going to double. Yeah. <laughs> do it sometimes. You know, it's your little like cheap meals, your workout days, you need something quick, but cook your own food. Right. get used to learning how to season like that's really what i try to push on people is like cook your own food that's my my youngest daughter she i mean you know she everybody eats out she likes to eat out but when she really wants something it's usually something home cooked she's like and we look at restaurants like you know i don't know i don't know maybe it's because i'm getting older or because she's getting older and she's smarter than all of us that she's uh on top of things more than we even maybe give her credit for. But she's like, man, just let's eat at home. Let's let's cook it. Let's, you know, do whatever in the house. So we know what's going on with whatever we have. Like we might have bought it from the store, but we know what hands are doing this. We know how it's going to the oven, blah, 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 blah. So I think COVID helped a lot of people with that. Yeah. Yeah, because one, at first a lot of restaurants were closed, so they had to cook. True. And then on top of that, people were so leery of, oh, well, they can cook it, but do they got COVID? Do they got the vid? <laughs> were they around somebody? Are they coughing? Like, and I feel horrible for the restaurants, you know, that they had to go through that, but I know it helped a lot of people. You know what I mean? That's true, actually. That, that's a good point. That's a good point. Oh, man. I feel like I missed something. What did I miss? Oh, let, let's talk about it real quick. We ain't got to, you know, no names. You You're know, fine. Your uh, significant other. So I was talking to one of our crew that I mentioned at the beginning, our six, they used to be together all the time. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, we were talking and it was like, man, I don't know what kind of personality steroid my little boyfriend is on, but that dude must have all the confidence in the world because you know, you you are you put yourself out there on a regular basis and you know you're not afraid to show your body and i know i know your dms be like ding 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 All surprisingly the not actually I was, we'll on. get into no i'll, I'll tell I'll, we'll go more into it but you can finish what you were saying but i just wanted to address that because again it's weird how all these misconceptions happen but i run my page professionally when yeah. I did nothing but model, it was more eye candy. It was more like trying to be sexy. Now it's like, this is my business. This is what you're paying for. 
So the hashtags, the delivery is different and the response is different than it ever was. See the, the, uh, the posts, sometimes I don't even read the comments because I don't want to see what they say. But every time I catch one, it's usually respectful. You know, it may be complimentary, you know, depending on how you, you know. Yeah, but it's still very respectful. And I mean, and that's also on me too. Like I set the tone and I tell anybody who is aspiring to be similar to me or, you know, follow the same lead. Cause I do have people that I mentor now too, you mm. know, that want to start businesses or who want to be trainers. I'm happy to share information. And when it's females, it's why I tell them like, look, you are your brand. I am a trainer. I'm not just a chef. You know, I had, when I closed the building, I had to stop doing meal prep because you have to have a building legally that they can come inspect anytime they want. Mm. You're not supposed to legally be doing this out of your kitchen. Right, you know, they right. find out you get shut down, you get fines and they're getting stricter and stricter every year. So I hope people are listening. If you're thinking about doing it, do it the right way because they are not playing. And it's good to be that way because people legit get sick. Yeah. But anyways, back to the body and the man. I, I'm not gonna lie, it was rough at first, you know, cause I was new to a trainer. I'm now just on my second year doing this full time. And, you know, the better I look and the better I get and the more I offer people, the more out there I am. But now he understands it's from a business point of view. He has asked us if he wants to check it, you know, check it, look at it anytime he can. <laughs> but you know me, like, I'm not that kind of person. Like, I'm right. not a slut. Like, I don't give off slutty vibes. So, like, he knows that he trusts me. It ain't about the other people because, you know, you can't control those people. But right. when they, if they do come to me disrespectfully, they get blocked. Simple. I don't need that on my page. This is a business. And of course, men come with the territory. Like I'm I'm advertising the females, but men come with it. You know, there's no way to filter your page. If you're a business page, it can't be pub um private. Right. And there's no filters. So what you get is what you get. But a lot of times, like I said, it's compliments. I've had men send their wives to me, send their cousins, their sisters. Like there, there's actually a lot of positive that comes with it though. That's dope. That's dope. Like I said, we were like, man, that dude must be like super confident. He must be like, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's trust. It, it, it's trust. Like we have to trust each other. He has to trust that I'm gonna put it out there. But when somebody tries to slide in my DMs, I'm like, no, I'm good. Hey, I can't do nothing but respect it, right? Can't do nothing. <laughs> but yeah, anybody that look, if you're listening and you're looking at a trainer or whoever, or a model or whatever, you have to be confident in yourself and you have to have trust. Without trust, you don't have anything. You know that you've been married how long? 20 years, pushing 21 in a couple months. And I'm sure trust is a huge factor that keeps y'all just chill. Like just, of course. It's, it curves so many fights. It's so unnecessary. Yeah, because I mean, sometimes you you like, I don't want you talking to this person. I don't want you talking to that person. Then it's like, there's only, like regardless of how you look at gender, there's only male and female. Regardless, of, I mean, however you want to describe it or uh, define it from there, fine. But you're looking at guys and girls. So you can't have all guy friends if you're a guy. Like, you're going to interact with some woman at some point in time. So there has to be that trust level or you're like cutting off half of your potential people that could be, you know, business partners, uh, customers, people that inspire. Sponsors, I mean, anything, you know? Anything, yeah. Yeah, if really, if, as a business, you have to take all of it. You have to take it all. It, you can't just be like, well, I'm not gonna deal with these people. That doesn't even make sense. Like, right. and you like, again, even though I don't have male clients and I don't take male clients anymore, because I did have some issues and that was a personal choice. I yeah. decided that that just didn't work, but I still, they buy CMOS, they buy fitness gear. They ask me for advice. We talk all the time. Right. We network, like it's still part of the business. It's never going to go away. Speaking of the gear, tell, tell me about this gear. Like I've seen it. I've seen, you know, the people that are your, your clients post videos using the gear, talking about it, whatever the case may be. How do you even get into the gear, yo? Like, <laughs> personal training is one thing, but turn it into merch. 
outside of the obvious, like a, a t-shirt or something, but turn it into actual things that they can use to, to do what it is you do. How did you come up with that or how did we get there? Well, you know me, hustle and mentality. Uh, it first started off with, you want your name on everything just for branding purposes, because the more people see your brand, they may not even know who I am, but they keep seeing my name. Mm -hmm. They get curious and you know, it all comes back to me. But I've actually been using uh, bands before everybody. Like I've been using bands for so long and it's actually because at our work gym, the trainers there have such a high certification a lot of them also had physical therapy backgrounds. So when I was working with them, they introduced me to bands and it just, I've done it ever since. And you know, I used to actually do classes downstairs with the old people because no young people wanted to be there in the morning, but me. Yeah, yeah. So it would just be me and a bunch of old people. And a lot of them had like, you know, bad knees, uh, bad ankles, bad backs. So they were using them too. And it just like caught on. We all started using them. So then when I was using them for clients, I'm like, it only makes sense for me to have my own bands. I just had to do the research and find vendors. You know, I had to do, I had to do a lot of tests because if I'm gonna put my name on it, I want it to be right. Exactly. So sadly, not everybody's in a, in a monetary position that they can do that. That's why I tell people like, if that's what you want to do, build up your training money or have a job so that you can actually fund that because you want it to be legit. You want it to be good. Because once your name's out there, if it's a bad product and you're just starting off, it's kind of hard to bounce back from that. Right, right. So you want to take your time and do it right. And then it just grew because I'm like, I use these accessories. Like I actually, when I go to the gym, I hang out with a lot of guys that are bodybuilders. Mm -hmm. So then they started showing me like figure eight straps and different uh, wrist grips because we started going up in weight. So it went from bands to doing that. I'm like, well, if I'm going to use all this, again, I had to find another vendor. Now I'm like, I, I sell everything. And then COVID hit. I was like, Psh, I'm ready. I already got bands. Y'all ain't even got them yet. I'm on this. On it. And you had to get, I mean, because you are your, one, you're the brand. Two, you're the, your source of income was being affected, but you still had another stream. But that's another stream for real, like. Training is one thing, but the, the merch is a separate thing. So that's another stream of income. Add that with everything else and uh, you're making it. You're making it. Well, you know, to be honest, training, some people look at it as cosmetic. Like it's not a necessity. You know, except for the people that I say, like they come and they got medical conditions. They're like, it's real. I need this. Right. Everybody else, like I might get a little petite girl, but like, well, I want a butt. She might want their butt for 30 days and she find out how hard it is. She's like, no, I'm good. So I need that extra source of income, not only as items to help my clients, but then I also service plenty of other trainers clients by my bands because they don't sell them. So they'll come to me. And that's another reason why me being cool with all these trainers is helpful because they're like, Melissa, I fucks with you. I like you. So why would I go buy this brand when you're right here? And I can get it the same day. Like we're local. Yeah. That's real. So it gives me an extra source of income when training is up and down, you know, because it's booming right now and then it starts getting warm. Everybody wants to go on vacation at the same time. <laughs> so I got to have extra money coming through at all times. Indeed. That's dope, though, because, yeah, I mean, that just goes back to being a decent person, a likable person, a real person, and people appreciating that and then them being willing to share their clients in another realm with you. It all comes back to being a decent person, Mello. And support, you know, like I'm not a hater. Like we're all trainers, we're all doing squats, we're all doing deadlifts. Clients really pay you for you. Right. The workout, like I said, pretty much most of us got around the same certification. Some might have higher than others, but it's like a doctor. Y'all could all have the same doctor degree, but one's got good bedside man and another one's an asshole. Which one are you gonna pick? Yeah. So, you know, just being a good person just helps all around. That's why they, we have a saying that your vibe attracts your tribe. Mm. And that's a real thing. Like the girl, like all the girls that come to me, like we get along, like we click like this. They research me, they look me up. And I, cause I always say that like research your trainer. And I'm always happy to share. Like, you know, right now when I have too many people, when people come to me, I'll say I'm booked. You know, you can sit on the waiting list. However, if you need somebody now, like I know some dope ass trainers and I send them right on over. 
That's great. That's great. And you've always been like, like as far as since you started the business, uh, you know, like I said, I, I'll see you post whatever, but it's a lot of times bigging up somebody else who you may or may not know who may be in the same area as you or not, and may have a, a person that sees you big them up and go to them instead of you, but it's all beneficial in the long run. Yeah, I mean, when you're doing it for the community like I am, or if you're doing it for a, a legit cause, it makes you move different. Right. Like I'm not just out here trying to get people's money. That's why the things I do don't make sense to some trainers who are doing it for the money. They're like, why is she doing it? Why is she shouting other other trainers? Because that's not what it's about for me. It's about the person. Like, I'm really trying to help that person. And if I can't, why am I just going to have you sitting here hold, on hold? See, I had, to, I had to pull it up real quick. I just wanted to be like, see, it, it does help. It does help to be beneficial to other people. I mean, 17,000 followers can't be wrong, right? Right. I'll say, look, add up all my pages. We probably had like 25 now. Yeah. Oh, and then and TikTok is 25 by itself. You need to be on there. I'm telling you, it's going to build your business. I learned that from Gary V. My, <laughs> I'm not going to blame anybody about the TikTok. I'm not even going to, I ain't going to say it. I'm going to let that. It's organic growth. I'm telling you, like they just send your info to everybody. I do agree. I do agree. Every time I look at TikTok, I'm like, TikTok feels so, even, even though it's not, and I've seen it not be, it feels so young. It feels so it is, but you know what? Look at it as, as a chance to get out your younger version. We all still have that inside of us. I know you got that playful kid still on inside. When the snow hit, you probably want to go out there and hit somebody with a snowball, didn't you? I mean, that could be a TikTok yeah. right there. It's a creative <laughs> outlet. You know what I mean? True. Like one of my videos has over 300,000 views right now. Like, I mean, it's organic growth. And then those people started coming to my Instagram, started looking at my YouTube, like, what is she doing? Now I got to start getting back on my YouTube because I just let it like be dormant. Right. Because most of my money came from Instagram. I'm barely even on Facebook. That's the thing, though. I, um, I talked to a couple of, uh, you know, people that are social media conscious, social media business people. And they are like, I mean, TikTok, they're like, you know, TikTok is, is the hottest thing and it is the, the quickest way to get followers also ig reels but youtube is hard to make money out, out of youtube when you look at instagram especially when you have from regular posts to, to stories to reels that is where you can reach a lot of people and and actually earn money especially with sponsor i don't know if you do sponsoring uh that much as far as on on uh social media but only my gems currently because unfortunately so many companies have come to me and I just I haven't liked anybody to that point you know me being vegan again yeah. it's it's products too so if they if they're testing on animals or using any type of animal product I've had right. to say no to a lot of people for that reason and then some people want me to sell waste trainers or Herbalife and I I don't do those so why would I sell something I don't use if I don't use it or if I don't support it I'm not going to let it taint my brand that's real that's real man I feel like you know I could ask you questions all day we'll just be here all day but we, <laughs> it's, it's a big day we won't say what it is but we're recording it's a it's a big day you know I know I wish my team was on there like I'm a little Ravens lady in the background you know start to bring that up watching um, <laughs> it's your team went to the playoffs the Eagles you know Trouble. But anyway, we're not gonna talk. <laughs> not gonna talk about all that. Any uh, any last words you got for the people? Of course, you got to give your social media. I mean, I'll post it in the uh, in the post as well. But anything you want to share? Well, I put this out to all my followers. I try to do it on a regular. But you know, if you're new, don't know me, shoot me a DM. Like I'm I'm a personable person. You can ask me questions all the time. I may not get right back to you like within the hour or so. But I really have this platform to help people. So help me help you. You know, if there's some content you want to see from me, something you think I can do for you, let me know. I got two Instagram pages that I put out there, YouTube and TikTok, Facebook. So whatever you need, reach out. I got you. Word. I appreciate you coming through, Melly Mel, Chef Melly Mel, uh, Nutritious Mel, um, I, you know, all the names. <laughs> Hello to me always. 
But once again, everybody, Melissa Maples. Man, it feels so crazy when I say your it just sounds crazy. Anyway, nutritious mails pretty much everywhere else. Facebook, yeah. Instagram, YouTube, my website, nutritious mails, because I started with nutrition, started with cooking. Now we're doing personal training, but don't worry, more nutrition guides are coming up. That's what's up. Once again, nutritious mails, bam. So us out here. Thank you. Have a good day. Indeed, you too.